Hello and welcome to the Ice Guys. This is the show that takes you into the world of the National Hockey League. Every game, every day, from a betting perspective. With pro sports handicappers, Ian Cameron, Alex B. Smith, and various guests from the world of hockey and sports betting. And now, here's your host, Ian Cameron. Welcome to the Ice Guys, Thursday, April the 4th. Ian Cameron, we got the whole Thursday crew back in the house. Alex B. Smith, welcome back uh, to the uh, show. And Matt Robinson as well, uh, ready to break down the Thursday card. We're going to jump right into it for last night, get through the recap of what was a very entertaining Wednesday night of hockey. Five games. Uh, every game was entertaining in its own way. And, of course, it started with just fight night at the Garden last night at Madison Square Garden. Uh, just an absolutely batshit, wild, crazy, insane beginning to Devils versus Rangers. Look, I said it on the show yesterday. It was obvious from a mile away that it was going to be a Rempe versus McDermott fight last night. We knew it was going to happen. We knew Rempe was going to take the medicine for the not only the Bastion incident, but especially the Siegenthaler incident, which was 10 times worse, where he elbowed him in the head, and then he did the wave going off the ice uh, when he got ejected from that game. You knew that he was going to pay the comeuppance last night, and you knew it was going to be Rempe versus McDermott, uh, and potentially early in that game. What I did not expect was Green to put out the five on the ice that he did, which told you he was ready for some kind of physicality and throw down. And Peter LaViolette, with last line change, said, you're going to do that? I'm going to put out some of my uh, uh, tougher uh, players on the ice. And sure enough, that's when shit hit the fan. A full-on line brawl. Even Igor Shosturkin dropped his blocker thinking of maybe crossing the red line, you know, at one point too during that to maybe get after Kokkinen at the other end. But that was uh, absolutely nuts. Um, crazy stuff. Crazy beginning to the game. And, of course, uh, at center ice, the main event of all those uh, bouts in the first uh, seconds of the game was, of course, Rempe and McDermott, uh, as we expected. Uh, it was a very, very uh, spirited fight. It was just the crowds going nuts. Uh, you know you're going to get your uh, NHL people out there or the people that follow the sport or people that don't follow the sport says, is this what we want in our sport? Well, sometimes the situation dictates it. Uh, and to me, you knew you were going to get Rempe McDermott. Uh, I'm glad that happened. Um, I didn't expect, you know, a full line brawl like that, but maybe I should have expected it considering it's the same shit the two teams went, had in 2012. Uh, and sure enough, that's how it started. And then, of course, looks like we're finally ready to settle in. And we see uh, Dawson Mercer going at it, too, uh, in a scrap with Will Cooley, two young kids. Uh, both uh, Mercer's only in his second year and Will Cooley is in his first year. So uh, that was pretty cool to see a little spontaneity there. And then they finally got down to uh, the game itself. And Rangers had a great second period. Devils answered back, took the lead 3-2. And then the New York Rangers responded. Uh, in the third, tied the game, took the lead, and eventually ended up winning uh, that hockey game uh, and pretty much sinking whatever faint hopes maybe the New Jersey Devils might have had in the process uh, for the Stanley Cup playoffs uh, with that game last night. Uh, the other games we saw last night uh, in the NHL, like I said, a few more games than usual uh, on a Wednesday night. Uh, Tampa with a 4-1 win against Toronto. Um, it was one of those games where the Leafs didn't play badly but every mistake ended up in the back of their net. You know, odd man rushes, the power play at opportunities for the Leafs did not cash in. And it was one of those nights where Andre Vasilevsky was pretty damn good uh, in net for the Lightning. They get a 4-1 win over the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. No line brawls in this game, but still a very entertaining fight with Tanner Janot and Ryan Reeves. Uh, they went at it. Reeves getting the better of it uh, in that game. As we, as we know, he doesn't lose many. Um, the LA Kings 5-2 over Seattle. That was my best bet on the show, over 5.5. It's now 3-0 and to the over for the Kings without Philip Deneau, who once again did not play last night uh, for the LA Kings. And we're noticing the defense not nearly as sharp. And, you know, that's a big thing that we're noticing with the uh, LA. And it could have been more than two goals for Seattle, if not for some good goaltending last night. But LA gets the five spot and the game goes over the total. So happy to see that come through. Uh, the Vancouver Canucks with a 2-1 win against Arizona. I mean, I'm not panicking about the Canucks. People will say, oh, you just barely beat Arizona. Well, Arizona's tough at home. Uh, and Vancouver played a very good defensive game, found a way to win. You know, I'm not going to criticize that. Uh, I'm not going to criticize many wins at this time of year, no matter how ugly they may look. Because at this point in time, that's what it's all about. You know, teams are tired. Teams have had a lot of games in a short period of time. Just win the game. 
uh, and Vancouver found a way uh, last night. And Arter Silov's now 2-0 uh, as a starting goaltender for the Vancouver Canucks this week, winning both of his starts against Anaheim and Arizona. So credit to the Latvian Arter Silovs, who's looked pretty solid, actually. Pretty calm, pretty poised in net for the uh, Vancouver Canucks. And speaking of calm and poised in net, one the, the game we kind of thought would be the game of the night going into it, uh, what a performance by the Dallas Stars. I mean, that was complete. That was 60 minutes of just all three zone dominance, really, over the Edmonton Oilers. Although, I don't want to make it sound like they were dominant start to finish. I mean, Edmonton was taking it to Dallas in the first period and early in the second, and they had a big shots advantage, but they had power play after power play Edmonton. The Dallas penalty kill and the Dallas D zone coverage, I can't say it enough how much it's gotten better in just the last week or two. I'm seeing sticks in the lanes. I'm seeing hard to make a pass tape to tape for the opponent in the offensive zone. I'm seeing everybody blocking shots, uh, everybody, the defensemen, forwards. You got to wonder if Chris Tanev's presence is rubbing off on these other players that, hey, this guy put his face in front of the puck for fuck's sake. That's what he's willing to do for the hockey team. The least I can do is try to block a shot now to help the cause as well. Uh, and I think Chris Tanev's presence has done that. You'll actually look at the statistics in the block shots department for Dallas in the last two weeks. The block shots per game has gone up significantly. And I don't think it's a coincidence that it coincides with Chris Tanev's arrival with the team. You know, I think that kind of rubs off on He certainly blocks a shit ton on his own. But I think it's actually filtering down to the teammates that, hey, if we want to win in the playoffs, we got to commit to that and make it tough and make it easier for our goaltender who, by the way, last night was spectacular. If not for Jake Ottinger in the early part of that game, you know, Edmonton could have gotten at least two or three, and they did hit a few posts. So there was, you know, a little of uh, bad luck, you know, lack of puck luck for Edmonton. But, I mean, Ottinger was phenomenal. He made a ton of high-danger chance saves. He the, the puck was like Velcro to Jake Ottinger last night. It stuck to him. No rebounds ever did I see off of him last night. Rebound control was just terrific from start to finish. There were no second or third chances for Edmonton, and that's where they're dangerous when they get those loose pucks and those rebounds. There were none last night for that whole game from Jake Ottinger. He was phenomenal, and then, of course, the floodgates open for Dallas late second period. Uh, just turnovers galore by Edmonton. What the fuck Darnell Nurse was thinking on that pinch there down the boards knowing that Wyatt Johnston's coming out of the box you got to know time and score situation too the penalties expiring for Dallas you got to know Johnston's coming out of the box you pinch and you get caught you're not getting back and there's a guy coming out of the box that's going to join the rush and make it a big time odd man rush and what was it four on one and it ended up in the back of the net I feel bad for Pickard Pickard didn't play that bad they hung him out to dry on so many goals last night and Dallas shuts it down in the third a complete dominant five nothing win for the Dallas Stars. So with that in mind, we'll let Matt talk first because I know he's been itching for this recap segment so he can wax poetic on just what a great <laughs> performance that was last night by the Dallas Stars. The floor is yours, Matty. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't want to reiterate too much of what you said, but uh, obviously good to see and always nice to see on a national TV broadcast. We talked about it, um, I think, on Tuesday, but uh, – made it out to a bar that, you know, wouldn't traditionally have the stars game on. So it's, uh, it's always nice in that setting. Um, but then obviously for them to play well, and, you know, you mentioned block shots. I mean, they showed that clip of McDavid on the uh, power play. Like, yeah, he's got the puck for a minute straight, but like he never gets within the house. So, you know, he's not going to score a lot of goals on, on good goaltenders from, you know, the wall, um, or anything like that. So, Thought they played well. I think uh, I told you last night, but that that stick play Jamie Ben had, you know, ten minutes into the game that would have tied would have tied the game. Um, you know, Andre makes that shorthanded two on zero save that you know could would have tied the game. Um, so I think you know seeing guys like Ben um, making those types of defensive plays. Um, you know, at his age, he knows. He's playing great hockey for his age, but his years are limited. This team has the depth. They've got the young guys. They've got the old guys. Um, if Andre plays like that, I mean, you know, I think he is well aware that this could be his last chance at, at a real run. So, um, yeah, I, you know, love to see it eight in a row. Again, there were some mix and match games in there, a couple games against like San Jose and Arizona. But, um, I mean, it's, it's still the NHL. 
you saw Columbus beat Colorado the other night. Like it, every night's going to be a, uh, a tough battle. Some are worse than others, but uh, two shutouts in a row and eight in a row is, is definitely a good feeling this time of year. So it's great to see. No doubt. What was great to see too was Henrik Lundqvist and Jake Ottinger in the interview after the yeah, game. That, that was, was awesome. awesome. That was awesome because Jake, apparently Henrik Lundqvist was a favorite goalie to watch growing up. That's pretty cool. He got to be in the post game there and Henrik Lundqvist saying, you know, I love watching you play. Keep up the great work. It's fun to watch you play. I mean, you can tell Jake's just got this ear to ear grin. Like it's just, it's just like it's hitting him. Like, wow, this is pretty fucking cool. You know, it's uh, cool that like, uh, you know, he just shut out a team with two of the best offensive players in the world. And, you know, that's probably the moment he'll remember more so than the game is, you know, that interview with Lundqvist that just shows you, you know, hockey is much more than uh, just the game. And so, yeah, that was great to see kind of a tear, tear breaker for you. <laughs> that was actually, it was, it was like, geez, it's getting all nice and mo- mo- emotional now watching that. <laughs> Henry Lundqvist is a genuinely great dude. I mean, yeah. he really is oh, yeah. like, there's, he's a great, like he, you, you think he's dressed in these million dollar suits, but he doesn't have million dollar attitude. There's no, there's not a lick of, um, you know, smugness or attitude in that guy. Uh, he is just a down to earth, down to earth superstar, and he's tremendous on yeah. television. So great to see that, Alex. What were your thoughts on uh, last night? Yeah, well, we start with that Stars game. I mean, it was absolutely fantastic effort by by them, and nice that you know, running off the seat in the roll uh, streak. But like I said, getting things together. We talk about this during the year how the second half of the season, you have teams that will find their way back in themselves in the playoffs. You have teams that will, you know, run hot and heavy throughout the year and just kind of keep that up, but then they'll kind of rest guys and kind of take things off. Dallas is in that spot now because of the fact that they're still in that, uh, you know, they're in the playoffs, but trying to get that division race, trying to get home ice, they're fighting for something still. And so they're these are meaningful games now, and they're sharpening the sword. Playing these meaningful games and winning these games now keeps you hot and ready for the playoffs. You're not – you know, getting a this is a draw of a bunch of bad teams and playing some mediocre games. They were doing what they were doing at the beginning of the year, having a bunch of games go to overtime and hanging close with some bad teams. Then I would be a little worried. Now what what I'm seeing, I was willing to take a shot, and I did last night after the game. I got plus four twenty five on Dallas to win the West, plus eight fifty on them to win the Cup. And, and the way that I see this lining up now is that if you have Dallas and Vancouver, essentially the number one seeds in their quadrants, they go in and take care of business. Now in the Western Conference Final, I have both teams to win the West and both teams to win the Cup in pocket. I can just pretty much free roll it from there and, and go by a game by game basis. So it was worth taking that that sh- that shot and that look because obviously that number is going to keep going down the more that Dallas wins here in the regular season. So big win for them, big win for Ottinger. Uh, like I said everybody looking like they're they're clicking in the form at the right time. Where I know a lot of people are worried about Vancouver and like I said, you know, kind of having these sloppier wins, but. Not to worry about that. Like I said, Arthur Silov's coming in, stepping in. That's what he's supposed to do. If he's the guy who's going to be a future number one B or number two goalie in this league, you got to beat those bad teams, beat Anaheim, beat Arizona. So to do that and and give those teams, give his team points uh, late in the year, especially you know having the issue where they're waiting for Demko to be back and ready for game one of round one in the playoffs. Those are solid wins in my eyes. Like I said, you can't criticize too many wins here now. It's all about getting wins however you can, getting points however you can, uh, as we're, you know, 16 days away for the start of the playoffs. And you've seen the physicality continue. Obviously, we knew there was going to be fireworks with New York and New Jersey. Like I said, no one saw a line brawl coming. And I'm pretty sure Peter, Peter Laviolette was the one who was kind of arguing back and forth and, and pissed off about the line brawl because he ends up losing Keandre Miller and Jacob Truba. Certainly believe he would have put two other defensemen out there if he knew that four guys. He and the Rangers had way more to lose than the Devils. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. So, but resilient win for them to come back, missing those two guys, giving up a lead, and now coming back. I think it said the 22nd comeback win for for the Rangers most of the season with 13 comebacks in the third period. Uh, That's a mark of a team that you want to back in the playoffs right now. They're, They're getting hot. They've been hot throughout the second half, but finding ways to win when they're down, not giving up, not letting themselves get buried, having that killer instinct to come back, take the lead, and, and hold on to it and get the win. Shesterkin was phenomenal in the third period, making some big-time saves. Uh, you mentioned Cal- Calvin Pickard uh, in, in that Oilers game, by the way. He's still spotty. Like, like I said in our chat, mid-goalie doing mid-things. He looked good in the first 20 minutes, but 
You go back to the last time they played Dallas and the time they played Dallas here, well, eight goals given up in the second period. That's something you have to maybe start looking for when Pickard gets starts. If Pickard does get a start in the playoffs or if he gets a start late, this guy's confidence kind of shakes a little bit in the middle and later frames of a game. And that's something you're going to start seeing from these goalies who aren't that great, where in comparison, goalies like Shesterkin, goalies like Ottinger, stepping up and standing and deliver when they need to throughout the game or, or late in the game. So that's the thing we have to look at now, backing better goalies, backing better teams, and, and trying to find those right prices. And, you know, we might have to lay a little bit more juice. You know, I'm not big on laying 125, 130 in the regular season, certainly not in October and November, but I'll do that a little bit more now here in April and May because I know what I'm seeing now. I have enough information here as we get closer to 82 games to know what I can rely on, who I can rely on, and what I can't. So uh, those are the big takeaways for me from last night. All right, great stuff. Uh, yeah, very entertaining night uh, in the uh, NHL. And there we go. Uh, yeah, we're all on this Dallas bandwagon. I know that's music to Matt's ears, that uh, we're all very uh, happy to see the way uh, they're playing right now. Uh, with this uh, nice little run they've put together. Although last night cemented it. Like, to Matt's point, they did play. There's a lot of San Jose and Anaheim and an up-and-down L.A. team on their recent schedule, Dallas. Last night, that was Edmonton. That's one of the powerhouses in the West, and you drum them. you know. So that's that, to me, was very impressive, no question. All right, let's get into this Thursday card. This Thursday card is very impressive. There's some really good matchups and important points at stake tonight across the board. We'll begin with Tampa Bay, Montreal. The Lightning minus 155 road favorites, six and a half the total uh, here in this game tonight. Back to back for the Lightning, obviously, after a 4 1 win against Toronto last night. Uh, so we'll see how they fare here. And obviously, with the back to back, there's a very good chance that we're not going to see Andre Vasilevsky tonight on a back to back. The question is, who are we going to see in net? Because Jonas Johansson's been dealing with a lower body injury. He wasn't even available last night to back up. Uh, Vasilevsky in the game against Toronto. So are we going to see Johansson good to go? It probably will be him if he is ready to go and return from that injury. And if not, they have called up Matt Tompkins from the American Hockey League, who, of course, has had three starts previously this season with the Tampa Bay Lightning, 889 save percentage for him uh, in those three starts. So bottom line is you're, it's going to be a drop-off regardless, whether it's Johansson coming off injury, or whether it's Matt Tompkins in net, it's going to be a drop-off here for the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning uh, in this game against the Montreal Canadiens, who, you know, they're kind of doing what Ottawa's doing, you know, in their uh, in their same division, where they're they're hot right now, even though they're out of the playoffs, they're playing some good hockey. You know, they won the last two games of that road trip uh, at Seattle and at Colorado. Uh, the Montembeau performance in Colorado, of course, very good. They've come back home. They've taken two out of three games, the Flyers and the Panthers, two pretty good. Now, Florida's scuffling a little bit right now. Still, to beat Florida is impressive, 5-3. To beat Philadelphia, 4-1. Flyers have everything to play for right now. The only loss was Carolina, 3-0 in the last five games for Marty St. Louis and the Canadians. So they're playing well. Caden Primo is going to get the start tonight for them. Don't look now. Caden Primo, you know, three of his last four starts, the guy has given up one goal or less. So he has suddenly uh, played some better hockey in between the pipes for this Montreal team. Uh, a shutout, by the way, in one of those starts as well against Columbus. And then he also, of course, gave up just one goal uh, against Philly uh, in that last start that he had. And then there was one too. Seattle, he played very well. So he's played better in net. We'll see if he can carry that over to tonight. The way I'm going to approach this here is Tampa Bay is playing pretty well, other than the Detroit game where they lost to the Red Wings the other night. They're playing pretty well. I'm not sure I want to take Montreal to win. What I am going to do, though, is I'm going to take their team total. I do like over two and a half. It's a cheap minus 140 here uh, on the Montreal Canadiens. I think they can get three goals. I like what I've seen from them offensively here. Certainly the last uh, few games, they scored four against Philly, five against uh, the Florida Panthers. Uh, I think there's a chance they can get to the three mark here tonight against uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, and it's worth noting, too, with uh, Tampa Bay, when you go on the see their road results, you know, on the road they have prior to the Toronto game, they had allowed at least three goals in four of their last five road games. So I think the team total is where I'm going to usually I do it when I'm kind of leaning dog, which I am here. I'm taking the money line and the team total. I think I'm just going to take the team total here. Because I don't know if I want to step in front of Tampa on the money line here. So the Montreal team totals of interest to me. 
Uh, first period over, certainly, with Tampa Bay. We've talked about that. What is it now? 17-4, and four, I believe, the last 21 yeah. for the uh, first period over. I know they had the loss against Detroit in the first period over, but it came right back a win last night with the Leafs lightning first period over in that game. So those are the two looks I like the most. I I don't love the full game over as much, but I like Montreal team total over because I know I'm probably going to get Tompkins or Johansson, and I like that first period over. What do you think here, Alex? Tampa Bay, Montreal. Yeah, I, like I said, I understand taking team total at Montreal before money line. Both of them make some sense because it's, it's, it is going to be Matt Tompkins. They asked Cooper about Johansson. He is out. And I can't imagine him running Vasilevsky back to play Montreal. So Matt Tompkins is your goalie. That's not good. Definitely don't want to lay 155 with Matt Tompkins, uh, even against Montreal. But what I like here is his goals in general. I like first period over, I like first period both teams score. I like the full game over. I'll play that small. Over trifecta. Grab, All right. Over trifecta, but I might grab a little bit more on the over end game. And uh, like I said, with Caden Primo, you mentioned, okay, Three of the last four starts, he's given up one goal or fewer. But you said he shut out Columbus. They're trash. You said he allowed one goal against Seattle. Seattle. They're trash. One goal against Philly. They're schizophrenic. Most times they play like trash. So I'm not not impressed by those numbers at all. There should be goals back and forth in this. And keep <laughs> one funny note too. I have to make on edge work, and of course uh, he does his Leafs post game show. Zach Phillips. He has a bet that he's got to settle, and he's going to be drinking an egg for every goal that's scored in this game. And it's going to be on a live stream tonight if you follow Edgework. So uh, we're really hoping because of that as well, too, that we see a lot of goals because uh, we're going to probably see him drink. I think we're going to see him drink about 10 eggs here. So I do like the over, but I love the over first period. I love the over both teams to score more than anything else. And uh, like I said, I wouldn't take a side here at Tampa Bay. Obviously, they want to keep winning keep their momentum going, but with Matt Tompkins and that, this is no real way to back them individually. All right. Very good. So uh, Alex liking the uh, over trifecta here with lightning and uh, Canadian. Zach Phillips is a good uh, friend of the show, our show as well. He's been on our bet cast a few times, by the way, I'm gonna have to send him our bet cast schedule uh, for April. Now that it's confirmed, because he might be able to pop in on one of our bet casts and uh, certainly a big leaf fan and his leaf post game show. Like he's like you said, he does it right now on the leaf nation network party edge work the show you do alex as well a few times a week yeah zach's friend of the show no question about that uh we don't usually like bad things to happen to our friends but we must admit the uh, thought of him you know having to put down that many eggs down his gullet kind of entertaining yeah. he was supposed to do the one chip challenge but apparently you guys don't have that in canada like it's legal or something i think yeah i think that's true yeah which is uh that's probably a smart idea yeah, you, you, yeah. It's, it's like eating pepper spray apparently so yeah, yeah, and that's uh, not an appealing thought for sure. Uh, Matt, how about you? What do you like in this one, Tampa Bay, Montreal? Yeah, so I'm kind of a combo of both you guys. I I, I honestly lean Tampa Bay team total here um, at, at three and a half. I don't want to lay the minus 155 on them, but I think they can score four goals. But at the same time, I think they're going to give up three or four goals. So I don't hate the Montreal team total, uh, but I'll definitely be on the over by effect uh, as well as the the lightning team total over three and a half. There you go. Lightning team total over and also the uh, over bifecta here, which is just first period over and full game over for Matt in this one. Yeah, as far as the uh, prop market goes, you know, it's basically, I'll tell you what, Armia, New Hook, Slapkowski. You cycle that trio. We've talked about that ad nauseum with Montreal. It keeps being, you know, kind of the value I'm looking at there. Uh, for the um, Tampa Bay Lightning, he didn't score last night, but he had been picking things up Sorelli might be a Sorelli night potentially here for uh, Tampa certainly point Kucherov we know that they're a threat every single night Nick Paul Nick Paul seems to score against Toronto and Montreal and Ottawa those three Canadian teams in the in the division and sure enough he scored last night against Toronto so Nick Paul I don't know what what it is about playing Ottawa Montreal and Toronto but it seems like when the Lightning play those teams Nick Paul makes an impact finds a way to put one in the back of the net. So we'll see if that continues here tonight. All right, next up. Wow. Who would have imagined two weeks ago that this would be such a huge game tonight with such big playoff implications? But here we are. It's Pittsburgh and Washington. It's Crosby and Ovechkin. And it means something. How about that? Uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins minus 115 road favorites, six the total. I don't want to give the Penguins, and I said this yesterday, too much credit. 
because yes, they're back in the playoff race and they have played a little bit better. And, you know, the win against the Rangers was pretty impressive. Even if the Rangers were in a tricky spot coming off the road trip, they had a gauntlet schedule, Boston, Florida, crazy game with Philly at home, come back on the road, go beat Colorado, play Arizona. That was an eight, five track meet. And then you're back home after that road trip with that gauntlet, you play Pittsburgh. And then you had that big fight night showdown on deck with New Jersey, you know, with that Pittsburgh game. So I think Pittsburgh capitalized on a bit of a dead Rangers team the other night, but still, you also have to say Pittsburgh played well, Uh, give them credit. They played a little bit better. Uh, I still don't trust them defensively, but they've been able to score goals. And certainly number 87 has been able to score goals. What Sidney Crosby is doing right now, he is trying to drag, his team into the postseason. He has been absolutely incredible uh, for this team. Multi-point games, multi-goal games, you name it. He's been absolutely fantastic. Four and one suddenly the Penguins in their last five games, uh, including a win against Carolina too, four to one at home. You know, not many teams have beat Carolina lately. Pittsburgh has. So four of the last five games, Pittsburgh's won. They've got momentum. They're three points behind this Washington Capitals team right now for one of the final wild card spots. So this is a huge, huge, huge opportunity for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Can they take advantage of it? On the flip side, we talk about a good form. Uh, Pittsburgh's in, can't say that about Washington all of a sudden. Three straight losses for them against Toronto, Boston, which were two pretty tough opponents. You can excuse those losses. But at Buffalo, and you get drilled 6-2 to two in that game, you know, they got the first goal. And then after that, You know, it pretty much fell apart for the Washington Capitals. And more importantly here, Charlie Lindgren fell apart. And Charlie, and now they're stuck. You know, Spencer Carberry's stuck because I don't know if Lindgren's how much gas he's got left in the tank. This is his most games he's played in his NHL career in a single season. You'd have zero faith in Darcy Kemper. That tells you where Darcy Kemper's, the confidence in Darcy Kemper is right now. It's zero. It's there's, there is no confidence. There is no confidence. Because they're going right back to Charlie Lindgren coming off a game where he gave up six against Buffalo. They've totally lost any sort of confidence right now in Darcy Kemper. That is stunning right now that that's where they're at uh, as far as he is concerned. That Charlie Lindgren, even with a couple of bobbles lately, he's getting this net here in this pivotal game against against Pittsburgh. No shocker at all that Pittsburgh's turning to Nedeljkovic. Nedeljkovic has been better than Tristan Jari. And this is and it's been this way now for about a couple of weeks. So not at all a surprise there. We'll see how this game goes between these two teams. Normally, when you think a game of this magnitude, you certainly would expect defense to take over. But one thing we have seen about the uh, Washington Pittsburgh series over the years, six, three and one to the over uh, three of the last four meetings have gotten to at least six goals. That is where we see this total sitting uh, at six here in this game. I'm going to do a little over trifecta here in this one personally. I mean, I still think Pittsburgh's kind of an over team right now. We saw their last three games uh, all go over the total. 4-3 with Columbus, 5-2 with the Rangers, 6-3 with the Devils. I still don't fully trust them at the defensive end. Still can get caught. Still can have breakdowns defensively. Tons of bad turnovers they're capable of. Hasn't been as bad lately. But Pittsburgh is still a flighty enough defensive team. I think Washington can score. Back on home ice, three losses in a row. Washington can find the back of the net. I think Pittsburgh will find the back of the net because I were, their offense is in great form. Crosby has been amazing. And Lindgren is starting to leak oil a little bit. So for me, over trifecta, nothing on the side uh, for me in this game. I'm just going to sit back and watch it. Uh, I'd lean draw, but I don't know if the price is good enough. For me, primarily the over trifecta here. Uh, Alex, what do you think here? Penguins, Capitals. Yeah, I just like the over in the first period and the full game. And maybe a small sprinkle in the draw. It's not one of my favorite draw plays. There's other, other spots I like later in the card. But this could be a good back-and-forth game. Like you said, this game finally means something now. It seems like the last few meetings, you know, it was the other, you know, you had to go back to last year. Washington was falling out of it. Pittsburgh was kind of still fighting in the mix. Then you had at the beginning of the year, like both these teams are going to kind of miss out on things. Now they both, you know, kind of ramped up the energy and intensity. So I think we're just going to have a, a good battle. Like I said, Crosby uh, literally putting this entire team on his back every single night uh, and to be doing this at the age of 36 going on 37. Absolutely phenomenal. You got to give him uh, mad props and credit. He's been the only consistent penguin this entire year. Uh, except it turns into Delkovic in that he's been solid. Uh, finding the form that we saw from him when he first joined the league back in the Carolina days. So now we can see him, uh, you know, 
step up and, and win a big game for them. Same thing with Lindgren. Lindgren's a guy who, you know, we've seen him play well all season, seen him play well even going back to last year. But can you win a big-time game, get your team two points at home? Uh, so it should be a fun one. I think we see goals back and forth. I'm not sure who wins this one. So I'm not taking a side. Just going first period over, full game over, and a little sprinkle on the draw. Yeah. I actually – I'm actually – I came close initially to taking Pittsburgh. I want the team in better form. I certainly would only look at Pittsburgh minus 115. I lean that way, but I don't know. Then I've, I, I look at it. I look at the quotes coming out of Washington. You know, they, they look determined, you know, for this going into this game. But certainly form-wise, uh, I don't like going – I don't like betting against a team in, uh, in good form and betting on a team in bad form. And right now the team in good form is Pittsburgh. So – uh, definitely lean Pittsburgh. I don't know if I'm going to end up getting there, though, with it. Uh, Matt, what do you think here? Penguins, Capitals. Up, oh, you're muted. There we go. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, this is another over by Fecta game uh, for myself, but I actually got in at uh, five and a half, minus 130, um, a little earlier this morning. And I know last time I was on the show was the last time these guys played on March 7th. I did the same thing. I ended up laying a little juice to get it at five and a half and Washington ended up winning six, nothing. So I was happy I had that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think there'll be some goals in this game. Um, I don't think draws a bad look. I probably won't, you know, ride that, but I could see this being a three, three game and, you know, both teams need the points, but the thing that kind of pushes me away from the draw is that, they need the points from each other. So it's one of those things where, you know, in some situations teams are like, all right, let's just get the one. And then, you know, we'll try and get the second in overtime, you know, Pittsburgh needs both points and they don't want to give Washington a point if they want to kind of stay in the mix. So I would lean Pittsburgh here. It is in Washington. These games are always fun to watch just because even, you know, 19 years later, you still have Crosby and Ovechkin going head to head. So, It'll be a game I'm watching. I'm hoping for a lot of goals, but yeah, the bifecta will be my only two plays on this one. We've got the young kid, Miros Nichenko, by the way, up to the second line with Washington, so I think there's some value there, but my favorite prop here is number 87. We're not overthinking it, overcomplicating it. Crosby's got multi-goal games and back-to-back. -back. He has multi-point games in four of the last five. I'm going to sprinkle on over one and a half goals for Crosby and certainly over one and a half points you know, which I've been talking about for a long period of time, both at plus money, really good price, obviously with the over one and a half goals, but even over one and a half points is a solid plus price. So can't argue with that. He, if Pittsburgh's going to do some damage offensively, Crosby's going to be a big part of it, which he has been uh, recently during this uh, big run for the uh, Penguins to get themselves in position where shockingly they are still alive in the playoff race and boy, do they further their chances. There's a bunch of stats and graphs out there that show that if they win this game in regulation, their percentage chances to make the playoffs go up tenfold. But if they lose tonight in regulation, it drops dramatically uh, as well. So this is a which, huge, huge game. Which is the, the catalyst for draw season because yes. of the fact that they can't afford to not get out, to yeah. get out of this game without any kind of points. Right. They will do whatever they can. If, if they don't have a chance to blow this thing out and, and win it in 60, they'll do everything they can to at least force overtime and give themselves a fair shot. No doubt. Florida, Ottawa. We've got uh, Florida minus 150 road favorites. Uh, the total here, six and a half across the board. Uh, Ottawa finally has their losing streak, or sorry, their winning streak uh, snapped the other night by the Minnesota Wild 3-2. I thought they deserved a better fit. I thought they outplayed Minnesota, but it was a good night for Flurry uh, in that he played pretty well. Not didn't capitalize on their power play chances, Ottawa. And uh, Ottawa was, gosh, they were all over Minnesota in that final minute. Did everything but tie the game. But Minnesota hangs on 3-2. They're still playing uh, spirited hockey. The effort is there right now with the uh, Ottawa Senators. But they are coming back home off a little road trip. And is Florida going to lose every game on this uh, little Canadian, Eastern Canadian swing? I mean, my goodness, they lost to Toronto. They lost to Montreal the other night. And I know they're banged up and they're struggling. It's a combination of both right now for Florida. Uh, Ekblad out, Verhage out. The good news is Matty Kachuk is back. He's been battling an illness. They do have Matthew Kachuk back, which is the good news for tonight. But Ekblad out and Verhage out for the uh, Panthers. Sergei Bobrovsky confirmed in net. Corpus Salo expected, although not confirmed yet for Ottawa. Uh, they're actually battling some injuries too. Well, we know Norris and 
Hamannick and and uh, Crookshank and Shabbat have been uh, out. Uh, Shabbat may miss again. Crookshank is the newest addition, the guy that's been called up from the AHL. He's play, played pretty well. I, I just don't trust Florida enough right now to lay minus 150, but I don't know if I'm going to jump in on Ottawa either. So this is a side I'm not going to do much with, a total that I'm not going to do much with. I could see it going either way. Vlad Tarasenko is the primary bet for me in this game. You know, it's up on the top line. He's getting power play minutes now for Florida. And guess who he's playing here? Ottawa Senators, the team that traded him. So you got to believe there's going to be uh, a little uh, incentive here for a big night from Vladdy Tarasenko here for the uh, Florida Panthers. And his current form has actually been pretty solid the last few games offensively for the Panthers as well. So uh, the primary bets for me are going to be any and all Vladimir Tarasenko props uh, in this game. Uh, what do you think here, Alex, Panthers and Senators? This game's a pass for me. I don't like anything in the spot like that. Florida in their current form, definitely not even worth laying uh you know dollar fifty with but even in regulation. I really like the spot last two last time we saw these two teams meet, uh game went past regulation. Like I said, Ottawa, you know, had the winning streak snapped and now they sure, certainly would like to bounce back. It said it was a good game played by them, but Florida shut them down and, and uh you know found a way to, to end up getting the victory there. So this is a, a tricky game. I'm just going to stay away from it. So it's a pass. Oh, yeah. Batherson, Terry. Batherson point. Batherson goal, because a lot of his points have been goals. Drake Batherson, for sure. That's If you're talking about one player, if I had to pick one player prop on each side, Batherson, Ottawa, Tarasenko, Florida. No doubt. Hands down, my favorite player prop on each side uh, for this game. No question. And Batherson's been uh, heating up. There's no doubt. You could go with the Kachucks, too. Brady. Uh, against his brother, Matthew against his brother, because look, they want to they want to beat each other. They're, they're competitive bastards, uh, both of them. I know they love each other, they're brothers, but when they're on the ice together, they want to beat the other guy. There's no doubt about it. They they've got that competitive monster in them. So no doubt you could look toward uh, those kind of props. And great point by JT. If you're going to look at defensive props, defenseman props for Florida, you got to wonder who's going to step up without Ekblad. That's Forsling and Montour. Maybe a little more Ekman Larson too on the power play, but primarily Montour and Forsling, you know, are going to get much more runway uh, for the Florida Panthers on the blue line without Aaron Ekblad. What do you think here, Matt? Florida, Ottawa. Yeah, so I like the first period over here. Um, I think Florida obviously needs a statement, um, and I think Ottawa has been playing some pretty good hockey um, down the stretch. Now that the games don't matter, um, but I'm also on Florida team total over here. Um, it, it's a good price for three and a half. Um, I do think, you know, eventually they're going to wake up. I think defensively they're they're not as strong with the injuries, but I think it's going to help having Matthew to chuck back in the lineup. Um, and I, I probably will sprinkle on like a to chuck brother goal prop. Um, and then I did see after JT just men mentioned that Montour, just a point is minus 110. Um, I think I'm going to jump on that as well as far as props go, but yeah, I think, I mean, I lean Florida. I'm not laying minus 150, uh, given how they've been playing. Uh, but I'll take a chance with them to uh, score a few goals tonight and uh, hit that team total over. All right, good stuff. New York Islanders, Columbus Blue Jackets. We've got the Islanders, minus 190, road favorite, six the total in this game. It's funny, I always, when I can, I try to tune into the eye test, the sick podcast, the eye test with Jimmy Murphy and Pierre Maguire. They do a great show. Before the show starts on YouTube, they I don't know who recorded this song that they play on the on the bumper before the show starts, but it's uh it goes like this S I C K on the run, S I C K sick, sick. You know what? They're gonna be singing that about me regarding this game. Because I'm leaning Columbus here, plus one sixty uh, in this game. Maybe I'm a little sick. Uh, sick in the head for uh, thinking that maybe the Jackets are live here in this game. But there's no chance in hell I'm laying minus 190 with the Islanders. I, I know that. And I know they beat Chicago the other night um, in that uh, game against the Blackhawks, but that was way too difficult. You know, that was way more difficult than uh, they wanted, I'm sure. They were down one nothing. you know, going into the third period. And uh, they battled back, and they ended up beating the um, – uh, the Blackhawks two to one, but it was not an easy game. And I keep looking at Columbus and saying to myself, you know, it's another team that's the, the, all, all these teams that have just been underachieving. They're not making the playoffs. They've been massive disappointments all year. It's amazing how many of them are playing some solid hockey right now, you know, and Columbus is another one of those teams where look, they're playing competitively right now. 
they've only gone two and six, six in their last uh, uh, eight games, but they've won back to back. They beat a Pittsburgh team with a lot on the line right now. They beat Colorado four to one with just a phenomenal performance by uh, Daniil Tarasov. Uh, in net that night for the Blue Jackets. It's no wonder Pascal Vincent is rolling right back with Tarasov. He is better than Merzlikens right now. There's no question about that. Uh, He gives them a better chance here, as far as I'm concerned, to uh, win hockey games. He was absolutely spectacular against a very good Colorado Avalanche team. Uh, It'll be Ilya Sorokin, of course, for the uh, Islanders. One little concern, though, that I do have is it just seems like every day I look at this Columbus injury report, it's getting worse, not better. You know, it's Boquist, it's Danforth, it's Jenner. They're all game-time decisions. Shinikov's out. Of course, they've already been without Fantilli, Corrali, Kent Johnson for a while. Lion A's away on the uh, player assistance program. So that's a lot of artillery out. But who needs those fucks when you've got Alex Nylander right now for the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets? He's been absolutely outstanding. He has been. I'm not even joking. This guy's been insane. Like, William Nylander who? The guy that's been playing the best of the Nylander siblings here these last week or two has been Alex, Alex Nylander. He's been absolutely incredible. And I'd certainly like his props again tonight uh, in this game against the uh, New York Islanders. Um, That's probably even a better bet than Columbus. Plus 160 is just take Alex Nylander. This guy can't be stopped right now. It's just amazing. What a job by him. Like, this guy got traded. He's had, obviously, very marginal numbers at the NHL level. Now, all of a sudden, he's got to be – he's on the top line and because he's earned it. He played great, you know, when they started him on the third line and he was scoring right away when he joined Columbus. Now he's on the top line with Voronkov and Gaudreau, and he continues to just pile up the points and score goals in bunches. So, yeah, Nylander props for me, and I am very, very, very much leaning Columbus. I probably will sprinkle on the jacket. Something small, at least, plus 160. I don't trust this Islanders bunch. I just don't. Uh, what do you think here, Alex? Islanders jackets. This is another game I got to pass on. I, and I know you're not the only person I know who's on Columbus in this spot, but I'm, there's no way I'm backing them, and there's no way I'm looking at the Islanders in this high of a price. I don't even like the draw in this spot, in those Islanders, but this this game – just uh, two teams that are bad, two teams that are essentially going to be playing for exercise. I think the Islanders, uh, you know, they're going to seal their fate, essentially. Columbus, obviously, dead in the water. So, this is a pass. No, nothing good here for me. All right, there we go. Hey, I mean, we're talking about, obviously, Columbus is inferior to the Islanders. We know that. But doesn't that doesn't seem to always matter at this time of year. How many times have we seen, did we think Pittsburgh was going to lose to Chicago late last year? You know, and that nope. game that they had to have? No, absolutely not. It's amazing what pressure to win can do. It can crumble a team. It can break a team. And Columbus is playing free and easy. They got a goaltender that is in a complete and utter zone right now. And Daniil Tarasov was – this is not. it was not just the Colorado game. He's played pretty well now for a series of games recently yes. yeah. for the Columbus Blue Jackets. So this is a dangerous game. Throw the records out. To me, this is a dangerous game still for the Islanders. Matt, what do you think here? Islanders, Jackets. Yeah, I'm actually on Columbus here too, but I'm gonna split it up on the uh, team total over two and a half yeah. in the Islander. Or sorry, good call. The Blue Jackets, uh, Blue Jackets team total two and a half and uh, money line plus one sixty. Um, part of it for me, uh, you know, sometimes I let empathy get into my betting. Um, Columbus hooked me up with a nice money line win against Colorado. They hit their team total over very easily. It was like a few minutes into the second, they already had three goals. So. Um, got my heart with Columbus right now. Again, they're the, I think they're the only officially eliminated team in the East, like numbers wise. I know there's teams that are com- completely on the back end, but like Montreal, for example, is still not mathematically eliminated. Columbus is the only team that is. They're like, fuck it. They've already got their tea times reserved for the end of April. They're, they're out there just having a good time. And again, trying to hit some, um, some incentive bonuses. Um, you know, there's guys that are playing on up, upper lines that wouldn't typically, you know, if line A and those guys were playing. So um, make the most of the opportunity, try and get another contract for next year. So why not? Blue Jackets, money line and team total over for this one. Yeah, the split is my, maybe how I'll go with it, too, because I usually like to do that with the bigger dogs. It's minus 125 uh, right now for or actually minus 115 to minus 120 for over two and a half for uh, Columbus in this game. And uh, that's true about the Jackets one. The Jenner family situation is just so sad, so tragic, uh, losing their newborn like that. Uh, it's certainly just, it's a, it's a, it's a horror you don't want to see any young family go through. 
and certainly uh, we wish them the best in this t- brutal, brutally tough time. And um, like I said, that's why he'll be out of the lineup tonight, certainly uh, dealing with the, uh, the loss right now. Uh, of that and just uh, heartbreaking, you know, heartbreaking to see that happen. But, uh, you know, and plus he's the captain. You would think that does, there's that little emotional element here where, you know, it's rally around the uh, unfortunate uh, tragedy involving the the captain uh, here or the uh, team. So, uh, like I said, I don't think this is going to be an easy game here by any stretch of the imagination tonight uh, for the uh, New York Islanders. They never make it. When do they make it easy on themselves? It's very rarely uh, do they do that, the uh, New York Islanders. All right, we've got a good one. Next up, Boston and Carolina. There's no doubt this is two teams that believe they can be in the Stanley Cup final, represent the Eastern Conference uh, this season. Uh, we've got Carolina here, minus 150 uh, road favorites uh, in this game. Uh, the total sitting at um, six, uh, no, sorry, five and a half here, shaded to the over here with the uh, Bruins and the Hurricanes. Like I said, this should be a great matchup. Of course, these teams have met in the playoffs uh, previously as well. So there's that history uh, that's uh, ongoing as well. So should be an interesting matchup here tonight. Uh, it's been a very competitive uh, series in the past. Carolina's playing well, eight and two in their last 10 games, back-to-back shutouts for the uh, Hurricanes against Detroit and Montreal. And what's impressive, guys, is it's both goalies have it going right now. Both goalies are feeling it. Kochetkov's been great all season. And Freddie Anderson, look, I had my concerns. Older goalie coming off an injury. But this is as good as I've seen Freddie Anderson play in a very long time. Very long time. He looks dialed. He looks dialed in. My concerns are mitigated right now with Freddie Anderson. To the point where, look, with the way Freddie Anderson's playing, I'm, I'm starting to think Rod Brindamore is going to make Freddie the game one starter. I do. He's the veteran. He's done nothing to lose the net right now because he's been on fire since he's returned from this injury. And credit to him because I did not think he was going to be able to play at this kind of level. But he has uh, in net for the uh, Hurricanes. Uh, so I just get that feeling that because, look, he's a veteran. He's been in the playoff wars before. Now, that's been the issue in the past at times, the playoff performance of Frederick Anderson. But I think because of his current form, he'll get the first look. He'll be on a, le- a leash, though. Like, if he sputters in the playoffs, Rod Brindamore will turn to Piotr. There's no question. Uh, but I do think that Anderson's going to get the first crack at it. Swayman and net for Boston. Uh, the, we've talked about how this season for Swayman has been a little bit more difficult. The number's not nearly as good. It's been a little bit better though recently, and he's won back-to-back starts against Washington and Florida. Uh, and to me, he played pretty well in both of those games. So maybe a little bit of a turning point here for, uh, Jeremy Swayman, uh, Tim York, our guy goose, one of our favorites. Uh, he likes what I like. I like the draw here. I think we've got a good chance for overtime here in this game. I think we see two teams that are playing some pretty close competitive hockey of late. Of course, we saw the Bruins go to a shootout uh, against Washington. Uh, Carolina, you look at three of their last uh, nine games have gone past a regulation. So uh, I definitely think we could see overtime or a shootout here. Uh, Two of the last four head-to-head meetings have also gone past regulation, and three of the last four have been decided by one goal. Uh, even the Boston win, uh, Carolina win in Boston back in January was a 3-2 win in regulation, but it was a one-goal game. The last time these teams played here in Carolina was all the way back last year in March, and Boston won 4-3 in a shootout. So, yeah, I like the draw here. Nothing on the side. I wanted to take Carolina because I actually do think they can win this game and will, and I like their form a little bit more than Boston right now, but minus 150, wow. Didn't expect it to be not quite that expensive. Uh, what do you think here, Alex? Boston, Carolina. Not so fast, my friend. I don't like to draw here. I like Carolina, wow. and I like Carolina in regulation. I got them okay. uh, even wow. money about 30 minutes before the show. Don't uh, you dare I, tell I, me or any of us that Alex is Mr. Draw and nothing but Mr. Draw after hearing that. <laughs> and and, and I, I saw the trends of the, you know, the alternating games going to regulation. Like I said, three or four with, with the one goal. But I like Carolina's form enough to where I feel like they're on a, on a hunt now. And honestly, you can p- kind of correlate this. If you want to take a future shot, get some big money, maybe grab some seven to one or six to one for Carolina to win the president's uh, cup, the trophy. I said President's Cup, President's Trophy. But uh, you can take a it's shot at that. It's not golf, damn it. This is I know, not it's golf. Not, I know. It's not the cup. I know. But, uh, yeah, take a shot with them uh, at, at this point because if they win this game, that number is going, going to be gone. That number will probably be cut in half. So I might grab just a little bit of that in pocket. Not that I'd love that, but why not grab something to one on something that will be 350 tomorrow based on what I think is going to happen. 
So I'll have a little bit of that along with Carolina. I got, like I said, even money in regulation. Uh, I just, I don't like Boston's form either. You know, Boston's a team I'm probably going to be fading in the first round of the playoffs, whoever they end up drawing against. Uh, and like I said, Carolina, now that they got Anderson rolling, they got Kachekov. Like I said, ride Anderson as long as you can. If you don't, you know you got a guy you can call on and, and back up and, and Kachekov moving forward. I think Carolina's just in, in a good space right now. So they should be able to win this game in 60. So give me uh, Canes and Reg and give me a uh, President's Trophy on Carolina. I, like I said, I saw 7 to 1. So I'll grab a little bit of that and pocket it. Yeah, Maddie rocking the head nod and the bob and weave when Alex was uh, talking about uh, Boston being a fade team in the uh, first round. Kind of made me think maybe Matt's on board with that uh, line of thinking. What do you think here, uh, Matt, Boston, Carolina? Yeah, I, I'm i big on Carolina in this game. I, I'm also on the regulation. Um, I just got it even like 30 minutes before the show. Um, I think even Carolina puck line is not a bad play here. I I just think they're kind of a team that's trending at the right time. I think Boston, I know that they're up there in points, but I just, I mean, maybe I'm going to be wrong and maybe it'll be opposite of last year. Maybe they'll, you know, go on a little run, but I don't know. I think, and even given how, um, you know, Florida's sort of taken a step back about three weeks ago, I thought they were going to be unbeatable in the playoffs. I kind of lean Carolina as the favorite to get out of the East at this point. Um, I know it's going to be a tough road for any team. There's five or six teams that could get out of the East, and I wouldn't be shocked. But I think they're kind of the front runner for that. So I I don't hate that President's Trophy bet. Um, But, yeah, as far as this game goes, I'm on Carolina money line. I may sprinkle a little on Carolina team total over three and a half because plus 125. I like those odds. I don't think it's going to be like a – a 5-3 type game. So that's more just like a good value play. Maybe it's 3-1 and they get an, an empty net. Um, I I could see a case for the over here just because it's 5.5 and, and that's usually a system play for me. But I think Carolina is trying to tighten things up and gear up for the playoffs. So I think it'll be like a 3-1 type of game and then maybe you get an empty net goal to get that team total over. Um, but the, the bigger play for me here is Carolina regulation even money. I I I'd be shocked if they don't win this game at home. Yeah, after what I saw, Nashville's been an over machine, and Boston and Nashville played this tight as a drum game. And with the way Carolina's shutting things down right now, yeah, five and a half's tempting to bet over, but not for me, not doing it uh, with the way Carolina's defending right now. And by the way, when Carolina's getting the goaltending they are now from Frederick Anderson combined with Kochetkov and with that blue line, for as far as uh, defensively and goal prevention, defense and blue line and goaltending combined nobody's better than carolina in the east all right as far as that's concerned nobody as far as defending and goaltending when anderson's at this level right now that he's been at since his injury that's the best combo of blue line and goaltending to keep the goals against down in the eastern conference carolina has it in my opinion so uh, that'll be uh, interesting to see if uh, they can keep it up back-to-back shutouts for the Hurricanes coming into this game. As far as props, look, Gensel, you're right, over one and a half points is often something I've looked at for uh, Gensel. He's been hitting that quite a bit. Uh, Jarvis, we've talked about him and how uh, in, in consistent he has been uh, since he's been with Gensel and Ajo uh, on the top line. Martin Nuke looks like he's up to the second line with Kuznetsov and Natchez, so maybe a little Jordan Martin Nuke value. I think Jordan Martin Nuke scored against Boston before, too, if I'm not mistaken, so Jordan Martin Nuke may be worth a look. You know, if anyone I'm going to look at for Boston as far as props, and again, it's not, not going to go crazy with their props because you're playing a team that's been shutting it down lately. Heinen's got value on the second line. I would say Zaka, uh, Coyle, Geeky, any of the centers, you know, mostly would stick with those uh, that group for Boston as far as uh, player props. All right, next up, as we continue along here, we've got the uh, Colorado Avalanche and the Minnesota Wild. Avs, a sizable uh, road favorite here. Uh, right now, minus 165, uh, the total six shaded to the over uh, in this game. Um, definitely a not a good performance. Well, I shouldn't say not a good performance. They did have a shit ton of shots. It was not the best performance, put it that way, by Colorado. They lost to Columbus uh, the other night. We'll see how they fare here. Minnesota, to me, I don't, I don't want any part of them. I know they beat Ottawa, but, man, they got outplayed. They got bailed out by Flurry. They could have easily lost that game to the Ottawa Senators the other night. Um but, you know, minus 165 with Colorado. You know, their road performance still concerns me enough where it's not like I'm rushing to t- 
bet Colorado here, and they do have Eustace uh, on and confirmed in net. They really mean it in terms of giving um, uh, Alexander Georgiev a little bit of a rest right now uh, at this point of the season. Make sure he's fresh and ready to go for the playoffs. They also have some injuries building. Uh, Yakov Trenin, who's been good on the third line for them, is out. Big Val Nachushkin's out again uh, for Colorado. Um, so they do have a couple of injuries to deal with. On and in, though, I will say this, um, he has been better lately. He's had five straight starts, where he's six straight starts, in fact, where he's given up uh, six, uh, three goals or less. So he's been better. He's now got a 2.26 goals against 927 save percentage on the season. So his numbers are definitely trending in the right direction here for the uh, Colorado Avalanche. Um, but again, we're talking about um, a situation where uh, the Avalanche, you know, on the road have been a little flighty. And we are talking minus 165, not a price I'm overly comfortable with. I do like first period over. I do like that. I think we get a, I think we get Colorado trying to push pace early after the loss the other night. I don't know about the full game over. I lean, I, I actually do lean over by FECTA, and I probably will bet an over by FECTA here, but I think I prefer the earlier part of that uh, look, the first period over, thinking we can get two goals in the opening 20 minutes tonight with the Avs and the Wild. Uh, what do you think here, Matt? Colorado, Minnesota. Yeah, this is an interesting one for me. Um, just given the Avs schedule, they're going to be in Edmonton tomorrow on the back-to-back -back after the at, uh, Oilers just got, you know, shellacked and lost an OT game in St. Louis. Edmonton's going to be looking to bounce back. So that's going to be a tough game for the, the Avs. I, I'm going to lean on Edmonton tomorrow. Hopefully the Avs um, are the favorites, although I don't think that'll be the case. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I may sprinkle a little on Minnesota here. I'm also on the over by Fecta. I think the Avs will score some goals. I think they'll come out early after that Columbus game. Um, I think, you know, they'll be looking to score. But I don't know. I think, you know, Minnesota, yes, they're likely out of the playoffs, but they're not eliminated. So I know that, you know, they're going to still try and come out and play strong. I know Hartman's still out, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, just because of the value, if you can get it, like, plus 150, um, or better, I, I may sprinkle a little on Minnesota, just see if the Avs lay an egg with a road game. But, yeah, I know they're looking at their schedule. They're already thinking about that Oilers game. So I think that's something to, to yeah. keep in mind. But, uh, but yeah, over by FECTA for sure. And then I might throw a little sprinkle on Minnesota for our boy Terry in the chat. So um, I'm sure he'll love that. <laughs> Wow, I'm just looking at the uh, stat. I was already on over by Fecta, although I put more on the first period over. I'm just seeing now Terry Ray Vegas saying Colorado 12 and 0 to the first period over this after a road loss. The last 12 times after a road loss, they've gone over in the first period. So uh, there we go. Very interesting stat. Uh, good, good find there. Oh, what do you think? Uh, Alex is back. Alex, what do you think here? Colorado, Minnesota. Yeah, that's a really good find. And I might grab that in game, uh, you know decent low number, but I think we'd be able to get some plus money. I don't see goals coming in early in this contest, but I like the avalanche in regulation. I got this minus $1.10 uh, earlier this morning. I think, you know, this is a rivalry spot. Colorado having the chance to go on the road and, and, and essentially end the season of Minnesota. Uh, it wouldn't be the official elimination, but pretty much would be all, but, but uh, wrapped up that they would be out here with the regulation loss. And uh, there's also a player prop that I like that's kind of pertaining to that as well. Uh, so just staying with uh, Colorado regulation for pregame and then maybe look at that first period over in game. All right, there we go. Colorado in regulation and maybe a live first period over. Yeah, Brand. that's one of those bets you just take, put a couple bucks on it, maybe it hits. He is on the second line tonight with Middlestat and Lekkonen. So, and he is against his old team. Remember, they traded him at the deadline. So, yeah, Brandon Duhame, I don't hate that. I like Drew Ant for, with uh, McKinnon and Ranton, and there's still good value there uh, as well. So those are some props I'm interested in. Uh, for Minnesota, um, Matt Boldy's starting to heat up again. That's worth noting. Uh, you, he's a streaky player, so when you see uh, him start to uh, get things rolling a little bit, that's usually the time you want to start looking in the prop direction when it comes to uh, Matt Boldy. All right, uh, next up here, we continue along on this Thursday slate. All-Canadian matchup. Here next, uh, Calgary and Winnipeg. We've got the Jets minus 210 home favorites, uh, 200 actually in most spots. Uh, the total in this one sitting at um, six uh, shaded to the under uh, between these two teams. 
you know, with the with how up and down and all over the map Calgary is, and it was as predictable as it gets. And I'm sure, uh, and I had the voice of John Massey in my head when I was breaking down that game. Calgary is large home favorites. They shit the bed. They lay an egg. They stink the joint up, and it's happened over and over again this season. And it happened again against Anaheim. Anaheim has not been able to win any hockey game recently, and they go into the Saddle Dome and they beat Calgary because Calgary just stinks as a big home favorite. They always have. That's always been a a bet against or at least be leery of backing Calgary when they're a big favorite, and it happened again the other night against the uh, Anaheim Ducks. Now they'll look to bounce back here against um, the uh, Winnipeg Jets. I'll say this. Um, I, I, it wouldn't shock me if Calgary wins. I don't, I don't know if I'll pull the trigger. I'm leaning flames, though. They were, they were not happy. They were collectively very upset about the way they played against Anaheim coach. Ryan Uska was. Mackenzie Weger had some very pointed comments for a team that's not going anywhere. Their season was over long ago, not making the playoffs. They really were pissed about how um, they played against Anaheim. Uh, yeah, that's a, Terry's got the quote. Wait, well done. Play better for that next guy beside you. It was one of those games where you have to take a look in the mirror. Um, so I think this is a dangerous game for Winnipeg. Uh, Winnipeg certainly the better game team, and they did snap the uh, losing streak, and they did get off the schneid with the win against Los Angeles at home a couple nights ago. But it wasn't easy. Uh, they had to grind their way to victory. And keep in mind, too, Laurent Brossois was in net for that game. Uh, they're going to go back to uh, Connor Hellebuck tonight uh, in that Nito Nita rider, by the way, uh, for uh, Winnipeg. Uh, Nino is not going to play tonight. He'll miss this game. And unfortunately, I hate to say this for our guy, Connor Hellebuck, but it was like I said, it was Brossois who was in net for the win that snapped the losing streak. Hellebuck's on a personal five game starting losing streak. You now he's lost each of his last five starts, Connor Hellebuck. Now he's going to eventually get back in the win column. But 0-4-1 in his last five starts, he's allowed 17 goals in those five games, 878 save percentage during that time. Now, it's not all on him. You know, the whole team's got to be better. But I do think there's been a dip in his play. You know, nothing to be totally, you know, panicking about. But because we know he can get it back. We know he's a quality goalie. But right now, with 0-5 going into this game in his last five starts, with Calgary's propensity to play up and down to competition, I'm just saying it would not be. Shock me one bit. The Calgary Flames win tonight. And I'm kind of leaning, taking a shot. Uh, what do you think here, Alex? Calgary, Winnipeg. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a shot with Calgary. I see a plus 176 available. Uh, it's plus 170, plus 175 in that range. Uh, like I said, this is a, a Calgary team. You don't have much to play for, but if you got a quote like that coming out of the locker room, then say, all right, let's step up, stand, and, del and deliver one last time. And it's a Jets team that's been kind of shaky uh, of the three teams in the Central. The one team that I'm really not high on heading into the postseason is Winnipeg. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe they can get their form rounded into gear. But I'm taking the shot. Calgary has also won four of the last six meetings, three in a row. Uh, we've seen goals early in the last two head-to-head -head meetings. So maybe a sprinkle with the first period over. But this is a dog worth worth barking on. I know everybody likes the Columbus dog. I, I think Calgary might be the dog of the night here. So give me that plus one. I said plus 176 is the highest price I'm seeing. Yeah, I mean, it, to me, it's um, dubious to be uh, trusting Winnipeg at this price range right now. Um, and uh, Dustin Wolf, by the way, uh, in net for the uh, Calgary Flames tonight. And um, look, they got to play better defensively. And it doesn't matter who the goalie is. And it yep. is like they're, they're going to have issues at times defensively, like I've talked about over and over again since uh, Tanev and Hannafin got traded. Um, but uh, at the same point in time, Dustin Wolf's had his moments where he's played solid. For this uh, Calgary team, and we'll see if that can continue. He, yeah, Sean Monahan against Calgary. Yeah, Wolf. Yeah, yeah, he needs yeah, to shut down game will. for sure. Yeah, and I think he's capable of it. There's no doubt. Monahan, yes, Bailey. That's actually a very good prop. A very, very good prop here. Sean Monahan against Calgary. You would think, and he's actually been one of the Winnipeg Jets forwards. That's actually still been in pretty good form, even during the rough patch for the uh, Winnipeg Jets. So we'll see how this one uh, plays out. Uh, what do you think here in this one, uh, Matt? Calgary, Winnipeg. Yeah, I uh, I actually was on Calgary team total over two and a half. It's like minus 105. Um, but if you guys are riding Calgary, I might jump on and just do a split with that. Um, They've won three in a row I against had, Winnipeg as well. Yeah, I just, again, Hellebuck, I, I'm i not, if I'm a, a Winnipeg fan, I'm not paranoid. I'm not trade away Hellebuck. He'll be fine. It's just a skid, but it's one of those things, sort of like how we rode 
the team total over against Calgary after the Tanev and Hannafin trade. I'm not. I, I'm going to keep riding against Hellebuck until he shows up and you know has a dominant performance. So um, I lean Calgary here. Um, I'm going to sprinkle a little on the uh, plus 170, and then the other half will be on the team total um, over two and a half. And I could see I could see the first period um, over here, so I may jump on that as well. Um, I wasn't on it pre-show, but uh, it's minus 120. I feel like that's a good price uh, to maybe get two goals in the first. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, look, Hellebuck, too, he's given up uh, in the f- last five starts, the opponent. Now, the Vegas game, he only gave up two because two of the goals were empty net goals that made it got it to four. But the opponent in the last five Hellebuck starts, all five he's lost, the opponent has scored three, four, four, uh, three, and then the six that the Islanders put up. So that's why that team total does look actually kind of appealing here. Uh, with Calgary, uh, just to get uh, just to get three goals, and it's over two and a half, like plus a hundred, even money on that uh, Calgary team total. So this might be a decent. This might be another good split it up if you like Calgary money line and team total uh, on that side. Dare Halibut to pull his shit together, you know, because um, we know he's capable of it, and you know that 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 dominant outing could be right around the corner, and maybe even tonight. But let's see it. All right, St. Louis and Nashville. We've got uh, this is a, a pretty important game, especially for the Blues. Uh, you've got uh, Nashville minus one ninety uh, home favorites. Uh, the total in this game sitting at uh, six shaded to the under. Uh, it was a three nothing shutout loss. Are we getting concerned again with Nashville because they had the consecutive point streak snapped? Consecutive game point streak snapped against um, uh, last week. It was against Arizona. And we've seen all of a sudden since that time, uh, the loss to Colorado where they did have a lead and then the floodgates opened, Avalanche bombed them, and then a 3 nothing home loss to Boston uh, the other night. So all of a sudden, whether you want to call it regression, whether you want to call it you know, maybe a little bit of a bubble burst theory for Nashville after just an incredible run like that, the streak getting snapped, maybe it's a little hangover here, but suddenly three straight losses here for this Nashville team looking to regroup. Uh, St. Louis, uh, five and two in their last uh, seven games, four and two, I should say, in their last six games. Uh, Wins against Ottawa and Minnesota on the road. They get back home. They had a four-game homestand. They only went two and two, but they lost a tough one to Vegas. Some, I still don't know how they shut, got shut out by San Jose. I still don't. I mean, that's just, and that could be the death nail for them as far as the playoffs are concerned, because they're still got a huge uphill battle to try to make it. And that could have been the uh, nail in the coffin right there. But to their credit, we were worried about this. We said it the other day. People are throwing St. Louis in the garbage dump after getting shut out by San Jose. Watch them show up against Edmonton, and that's exactly what they did, uh, beating the Edmonton Oilers uh, in overtime 3-2 the other night. So we'll see how they fare in this game. They have not done well against Nashville this season. Two games head-to-head, 13-5 to for the uh, Nashville Predators, the cumulative score in the two head-to-head meetings against St. Louis. So... But I'm not laying a buck ninety with Nashville right now. There's not not at the moment, not in this little three game tailspin that they're in. Looks like as far as goaltending is concerned, uh, Bennington for St. Louis, Soros for Nashville. You see Soros, you know he's played lots of hockey again this year. Uh, he was a little bit better against Boston, but still didn't get the win. Before that, we saw him give up the four spot to Vegas. Uh, we saw him give up six in the game against uh, Arizona that they lost. So. It's not been smooth sailing for UC Soros the last few times we've seen him in net either. So I think this is going to be, and especially when you look at the fact that we saw uh, an over-series history big time with these teams, 9-1 and to the over, four straight overs. This is over by FECTA for me. Maybe even over trifecta that both teams can get on the board uh, in the opening period of this game. But definitely over by FECTA. Might even turn it into a trifecta. And I'm leaning St. Louis at this price. Now, I don't always like buying into the must win equals will win, but I know you got to give, you got a team that's got to go balls out tonight in the St. Louis Blues. And you do have a scuffling Nashville team that's taken a little bit of a step back, hit a little bit of a wall since that magical run ended. So I would lean Blues. I'll sprinkle on Blues, but I primarily like the over buy slash trifecta here. Uh, Alex, what do you think? St. Louis, Nashville. Yeah, I do like the over trifecta in this spot, but I love even more than that the draw. I grabbed it plus 375 uh, earlier at Bet Online. Chop around anything higher than 350 is definitely worth uh, playing on. Like you said, St. Louis needing all the points they can get, trying to hang on for dear life. 
three of their last five games have gone uh, past regulation. Nashville, like I said, kind of regressing a little bit, uh, ever so slightly, but they should be in, in solid enough form once the playoffs get going. But they, they need to have a good back and forth game here. The over uh, has cashed in like crazy. We're seeing nine and one the last ten between these two teams. So loving that over six, loving the first period over. We've seen that cash in three of the last four Nashville games. Uh, but also liking the draw here as well. So uh, expecting goals back and forth. So maybe take a four four or three three correct score uh, in pocket as well. All right, liking the draw and the draw pretty good price upwards of uh, yeah plus three fifty is what we're looking at. Uh, with the uh, draw here, Blues and Predators. Uh, Matt, what do you think here? St. Louis, Nashville. Yeah, I like the over bifecta as well, but my biggest play here is going to be St. Louis uh, over two and a half goals. Uh, it's it's like minus 110, minus 105. Um, I lean St. Louis, um, and you know, given the price point of the money line, I might split it up now that you mentioned that, but uh, I feel like they're going to score three goals in this game, so those will be my That'll be my main play. I might throw a sprinkle on the money line and then uh, definitely on the over by Fecta. All right, good stuff. And yeah, that team total again for St. Louis, it's worth doing with the big dogs. I've said this over and over again. How many times do the big dogs lose but still go over their two and a half? It's happened a lot. It's crazy how many times you've seen that. They lose the game, but they still score three goals. The bigger underdog. And it's very possible here. Keep in mind too, Nashville, look at the allowances the last four games. Vegas scores uh, four, Arizona eight, Colorado seven, Boston three, and three's good enough to cash that team total tonight for St. Louis. So, again, they've given up three plus four straight games now, uh, the uh, Nashville Predators, uh, to the opponent. Yeah, as far as the props, I mean, Forsberg, yes. I mean, it's just uh, redundant now saying Forsberg, but it's it's so true how good he's been uh, for St. Louis. Um, you look at it, Neighbors has cooled off a bit, yes. Braden Shen seems to step up in these games. I've just got that funny feeling Braden Shen might score tonight. Sod's been better lately as well. And don't sleep on Torupchenko, who's now up on the top line with Puchnevich and Kairu for St. Louis. We've talked about Alexei Torupchenko and how he's been able to get on the scoreboard a couple times. So that might be worth a look here tonight as well as far as props. All right, final game for this Thursday card. Los Angeles Kings, San Jose Sharks, uh, LA minus 310, road favorites. Uh, six, the total shaded to the under here in this game. Uh, congrats to Alex. He took Kings in regulation uh, last night. I know he wasn't on the show, but I do know he was on that. Uh, they ended up getting the job done 5-2 uh, against the uh, Seattle Kraken. Uh, I was on the best bet over for the show yesterday, uh, Seattle and L.A., and it ended up going over the total. Back-to-back uh, -back situation here for the Kings. David Riddick projected to be in net. Not a surprise after it was Cam Talbot last night. Philip Deneau still day-to-day, -day, and I don't think he's playing. If you ask me, I don't think he's playing tonight. I think they're going to give him another game to recoup, get you know, get himself healthy. San Jose, I don't think Jim Hiller and the Kings coaching staff is going to rush him back uh, for this game tonight against the lowly San Jose Sharks. So I'm, I'm treating this like Philip Deneau is going to miss his fourth straight game uh, for the LA Kings. Mackenzie Blackwood is confirmed in net for the Sharks uh, in this game. Uh, of course, the Kings, I mentioned it. I talked about it all week, the many Kings games recently on this show, that without Deneau, I don't think they're as good defensively. And sure enough, without him, 3-0 and to the over. And they've given up 10 goals in the three games combined. Now, it was better against Seattle last night, only two. But now you go back to big save Dave Riddick, who hasn't been nearly as sharp the last couple times we've seen him uh, in net for the uh, LA Kings. So you know what I'm doing with this game over once again. For the LA Kings, I'm assuming that we're not going to get to know again. Uh, I think LA can score on San Jose because, quite honestly, most teams can score uh, on the San Jose Sharks, and I think the uh, LA Kings can do the same here tonight. But I think San Jose can contribute here uh, to the offense a little bit, especially now knowing Dave Riddick's in net. So uh, Pinnacle's got over five and a half minus one twenty six. Shop around; there are some decent prices that you can lay with a five and a half in this game. Uh, as opposed to taking over six. So again, shop around because Pinnacle's got it at minus 126 uh, with the uh, over five and a half. FanDuel's got minus 128. Proline Plus has minus 125. Uh, Betway has minus 125. Uh, so you can actually lay about minus 125 or so uh, on over five and a half in this game. And that's what I'm doing. Uh, Alex, what do you think here? Kings, Sharks. Yeah, I might even uh, just kind of hold out and wait to grab plus money now that we're seeing those five and a halves uh in game 
that's 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 kind of the only look I have. Like, as I said, I see gold both ways. Obviously, no way we can back LA at that high of a price. No way we can back San Jose with as shitty as they're playing overall. Uh, so just looking for goals, and you know, like I said, it's later in the in the night. So when these late uh, games with these bad teams like San Jose and Anaheim get involved, I can just kind of look for some live action, especially if I'm doing well with my earlier plays and try to grab something. So something I won't really force, but my circle will be over five and a half plus money in game. Yeah, there we go. Terry or Ray Vegas. Um, Terry Ray Vegas is quickly becoming one of my favorite people in our chat. I mean, he's, he's dropping, you know, injury updates and stats and trends and great job. Uh, Terry Ray Vegas. Yeah. Dino is not on this trip to San Jose uh, confirmed. So there you go. Just what I expected. I, I knew they pretty confident. They were not going to rush him back tonight, especially against a team like San Jose. Uh, Matt, what do you think here? King sharks. Yeah, this is likely going to be a pass game for me. Um, I think Alex makes a great point about potentially getting a plus money on the over at five and a half. I do think five and a half is a good look. Um, so I may do that if I'm still, you know, kicking when this game starts. I guess it'll only be seven o'clock my time. So um, that'll probably be my only play. But uh, again, these are these are those games where there's no real value on the sides. Um, if San Jose wins, good for them. I I won't be that shocked, to be honest, just with how L.A.'s been sort of inconsistent. But, uh, I mean, I think L.A. takes care of business, but I'm not going to lay 300 bucks to, to win a dollar. So, um, yeah, I'll probably look for a live over here, but that's about it, um, if anything. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, for props, Fiala, Kopitar, you know, a lot of the same suspects we've talked about lately. Trevor Moore, he's heating up. And, yeah, Dubois even got a couple of points, I believe, last night against Seattle. Shocker. Dubois did something, uh, but uh, it wasn't against Winnipeg for a change. He did something against another team besides his old team. So uh, good to see that from uh, Dubois. So, uh, yeah, and I like the over. Like I said, we've been riding. the. We think the Kings are a worse defensive team when you take Phil Deneau, their best defensive forward, out of the lineup. And it's kind of looked that way. Great stuff uh, with Matt and Alex. Shout out to everyone in the chat. Hit the like button on the way out. Reminder, we uh, unveiled the BetCast schedule. Uh, earlier uh, this week, we've got five bet casts. One, two, three, four, five coming up this month. There we go. Tuesday, April 9th, next Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern, free bet cast. The following Tuesday, April 16th, final week of the regular season, Patreon exclusive bet cast. And then we got three playoff bet casts at the end of the month. Monday, April 22nd, free bet cast. Thursday, April 25th, Patreon exclusive. And Tuesday, April 30th, Patreon exclusive as well. So again, if you want to join us for the Patreon exclusive live betcast, and we've got three of them this month, make sure you sign up $10 per month. Uh, Patreon.com slash Ice Guys, goalie charts, totals charts, uh, bonus video content, our sides, totals, and player props each and every day posted on the page, plus the uh, access to the Patreon exclusive live betcast. So again, Sign up now. Great time to do it. $10 per month. Patreon.com slash Ice Guys. And check out the Ice Guys store. 20% off all orders till Saturday. Get on that. Get some gear. Get some merch. IceGuys.MySpreadShop.com. Yeah, absolutely. Three days left to save 20% off uh, on all your orders. Everything is in stock right now. Uh, perfect time to get it, especially with the weather kind of changing over. Good time to get a T-shirt, maybe get a brand new cap. Grab all that right there at IceGuys.MySpreadShop.com. Great stuff. All right. Bargain bin special of the night and best bets coming right up right after we hear from our great sponsors, Boston Hemp Inc.
All right, Boston Hemp Inc., make sure you check them out. And again, get 20% off all orders on the website using the promo code ICEGUYS at bostonhempinc.com. All right, bargain bin special of the night and best bets. We're actually going to get Matt's bargain bin special and best bet, and then we'll let him run because he's got he's got his real job to do uh, in a minute or so. So, Matt, we'll let you run. Uh, we'll go right to you. Uh, bargain bin special, and you can go right into your best bet right after that. Uh, what do you like? Yeah, so bargain bin is going to be a little bit out of left field, but uh, I like the Columbus Blue Jackets team total over tonight. So, so give me Cole Sillinger anytime goal. Um, I've seen it definitely in bargain bin material anywhere from like 350 to 400. Um, I'm sure Ian will give you a more accurate uh, range there, but he did score that empty net against the Avs. He plays on the second line, and, you know, why not? Um, and then as far as my best bet goes, I think I'm going to take it, um, to that, uh, up to Montreal, to that Tampa Montreal game. Uh, give me the first period over in the Tampa Montreal game. There we go. Not a bad choice to go with the best bet that is what 17 and four, uh, in the last 21 games. And that's Tampa Bay first period overs 17 and four, uh, in the last 21 Tampa games. So Tampa Bay, Montreal over one and a half. Uh, first period, best bet for Matt Robinson. Sillinger, anytime goal for his bargain bin special. Matt, enjoy your uh, shift on the salt mines coming up, uh, although it's from home, so it's not that stressful uh, or that uh, physical and labor-inducing. Yeah. But enjoy it, my friend. Uh, always good having you Tuesdays and Thursdays. Enjoy the action tonight, and good luck. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I'll just be hopping off this into a Zoom meeting, so it's not uh... – not anything too daunting, but uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys having me again. Always enjoy. Glad I made it on both days this week. Um, hopefully that continues, but definitely looking forward to the uh, the five betcast coming up in the next few weeks. So that's exciting. Uh, so definitely we'll be here next Tuesday for that if for some reason I'm not on the show. Um, but yeah, good luck everyone tonight. There's some good games on the slate. Let's win some money and uh, we'll see you guys next week. And go Stars! Uh, they were so good <laughs> last night. I had to throw that out there. Yeah, they earned it. Yeah, love it. Yeah. All right. Cheers, guys. Take it easy. See ya. There Cheers. he is, Matt Robinson. All right, Alex. Bargain bin special of the night. What do you like? Yeah. So we'll head down the street to XL Energy Center. You got Colorado taking on Minnesota. And Ian, you've seen the movie Scarface, right? Remember the big scene at the end? Tony's in the shootout or the mansion. Everybody's going coming after him. But then all of a sudden. You see things quiet down, and he's still talking shit. He goes, you fuck with me, you fuck with the best. And all of a sudden, somebody comes from behind with a double bear shotgun and puts him right away. That's going to be Brandon Duhame tonight, going up against his old team. Give me him the score plus 800 or plus 600 at BetMGM and FanDuel. He's going to take that team out, team that he was playing with for many of years and playing well and doing all the dirty work, doing all the little things, now getting the chance, like you said, moving up to the second line tonight. I think he's going to get a big, important goal and take care of things for Colorado, put this wild team out of its misery. So Brandon Duhame, anytime goal, plus 600. That is my bargain on special. Tonight. There we go. Brand we mentioned it. Brandon Duhame, second line, playing against Minnesota, the team that traded him. Uh, there you go. And a great price, plus 600. Yeah, they the, some critics were really too tough on Scarface. There were some people that panned it, and some people that didn't like it. One of the best uh, movies of all time. Uh, which is insane to me. I thought it was a phenomenal movie. Uh, in my opinion, but yeah, they're back in the day, especially there were people that were really uh, harsh with their review and criticism of that movie. But well, the first, uh, the first edition the of that movie, knows. Yeah. fun fact, yeah. quickly, the, yeah. the first edition of that movie had to be recut because eight people threw up in the movie theater because there was so much blood and violence. So <laughs> it was graphic. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. But I, I thought it was still a, just a, a great movie. There's no doubt. Uh, all right, for my bargain bin special uh, of the night for this. Um, slate uh there's a lot of good choices here uh tonight for the uh, bargain bin special uh, but you know what i think i am gonna uh, go with uh, something a little bit um i'm gonna go with something a little bit different here i just want to make sure it's the right price point uh before we uh, make it official because it's got to be plus 300 or better i believe we will get it at that price oh we definitely will let's go with vladimir tarasenko over one and a half points plus 400 florida panthers Whew! against his old team the ottawa senators He's up on the top line. He's going to be playing with um, Barkov uh, on that uh, top line for the uh, Florida Panthers, getting the opportunity to make an impact. Of course, with the injuries to Verhage, uh right now up front, that's opened up the spot for Tarasenko. 
And he's actually played pretty well uh, up there with Barkov and Sam Reinhart uh, on that top line. So over one and a half points, a very good price, plus 400 at Bet365. That is going to be my bargain bin special of the night for this uh, Thursday card. Best bets, Alex, what do you like for best bet? Yeah, it's still draw season, despite the fact that I have quite a few uh, games to end in regulation. We're going with St. Louis, Nashville, draw plus 375, still available at Bet Online. Uh, like I said, shop around, don't want to get anything super low in, in that spot. Anything 350 or higher, uh, something you want to grab, but 375 being the best price. Blues, Preds, to go past regulation, give me the draw. That is my best bet. All right, there you go. Blues, Preds, draw for Alex P. Smith with his uh, best bet. My best bet, uh, I usually try to be uh, you know, get too cute and be you know variety, something different. I don't want to go back to the same best bet I had last night, but I'm doing it. I want a winner. It's a good bet, in my opinion. We cashed with it last night. Kings over, right back to the well. Kings, Sharks, over 5.5, minus 125. L.A., San Jose, over 5.5. Again, 3-0 to the over for this Kings team, minus Phil Deneau. Let's see if that trend continues tonight. King Sharks over five and a half for my best bet. Uh, that'll wrap up this edition of the Ice Guys. Thanks to everyone in the chat for joining us. Hit the like button on the way out. We appreciate it very much. A reminder, the Ice Guys is live seven days a week, Monday to Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern, Saturday and Sunday, noon Eastern. And if you can't watch the show live, download the Ice Guys podcast in audio form on all major podcast platforms. For Alex B. Smith and Matt Robinson, I'm Ian Cameron. Have a great Thursday night. Enjoy the games and good luck. And we will be back for a Beantown Friday edition tomorrow of the Ice Guys. Mm -hmm.